it's a research school. All the departments are doing some kind of research, so you're getting what's going on now in the world. You're not getting, like, what was going on when such and such professor went through their education at whatever. There's certainly other institutions that, you know, allow for undergraduate research, but what I feel is special about UMBC is that um, the faculty are really committed to working with undergraduates to produce meaningful research. You know, it was like um, every morning I woke up, that's what I was thinking about. And the, the, the knowledge that I gained, I don't think I would have ever explored these things if I had not been at school participating in the research program. There are literary experiences in the English department. There are opportunities for research in the psychology department. There are the political science department has people out working in political situations and doing research and conducting studies. Uh, one of Dr. Johnson's students, I don't know whether he has an undergrad research, or one of those scholarships or not, but he worked in the budget office for the governor. That's, that's rich. I, I think for me it's um, observing the the creativity of our students and their their uh, tremendous abilities. Uh, very smart students who may not realize how smart they really are until they get involved in, in a project like this. And, and then the, the light comes on. So it's uh, the transforming experience that, that these projects can have for our students. <laughs> These are people that create art that is like solely for the people, you know, it's like they go out and they make their art and it's like <clears throat> some of them attach their name to it, some of it's just kind of nameless and the image becomes their, their signature. <laughs> Socks to change into? These. That's the one, that's so you can uh, measure out the gunpowder at 75 grams, or 75 grains per cartridge. Okay. The problem is at the museums, you see a backpack, but you're not allowed to like tear it apart to figure out how they did it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not only did you put insulation or stuffing in there for a couple of for a separation, <laughs> it's a, a much quicker process for order without a power. What's significant about these kinds of experiences is that we give students opportunities to think about their future, to ask questions, to solve problems, to raise issues, uh, and to be partners with, with scholars. That's the idea, that these are not just students there with, as vessels with stuff being poured into their heads. No, they're thinking along with others about these issues. And what, what excites me is that these are the same people who will one day solve the big problems of the world. That gives me goosebumps. Well, I studied abroad in Cairo fall 04. Um, it's a requirement of the scholar program I'm part of. And most people go to England, Australia, that type of thing. I want to go somewhere that I've always wanted to go to. So Egypt was the first one that came to mind. So I studied abroad at the American University in Cairo. Did a lot of traveling and stuff like that. I actually took a class called Art and Architecture in the City of Cairo, which was really interesting because basically on Fridays or Saturdays we would go and basically tour the mosques that we had just previously studied in class on slide. It's cool to see stuff like that still being used today from like the 14 and 1500s, so. My project um, is investigating the history, society, and culture behind Baltimore, Washington area mosques, kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. And I used the mosques in Cairo as an old world example, kind of a traditional example compared to the newer example of the Baltimore, Washington area. When I was younger, I went to a Muslim school that had a mosque attached, and there were kind of a couple of stories floating around as to how the mosque actually started. And I found out that it was, they, they bought it from a church in 1984, the land and the building. And that question kind of came out again when I was coming out with, the, with research. For the undergraduate research award, you have to have a faculty advisor. And mine is Dr. Birkenmeyer from the history department. And um, working with him has actually been really cool because he's kept me from falling into some traps that a lot of, I guess, novice historians do. He kind of keeps me from kind of branching off into wild conclusions and stuff that I apparently tend to get into. 
is really cool because I remember how excited I was. My um, dad called me and he said, somebody called about some sort of scholarship. And so I went back to my dorm and there was a message on the machine from my professor who was saying, oh, you know, you, you got money. And, oh, and so it was really kind of cool the fact that, you know, my work is being recognized as something important, something worthy that, you know, money should be given to. Even though I'm not necessarily a doctor or a graduate student or anything like that, you know, I can still conduct this and, you know, still contribute something to the field. History is important. You have to know where you came from. Whether it's one group of people being the Muslims or it doesn't matter because that's linked to everybody else. In the interdisciplinary studies program, I think they uh, recognized that, that I had um, um, a need for their support. And I think the other thing was that they were a, a little bit bemused by the fact that I was an over 70 year old woman who was a returning student and um, enthusiastic about some, um, some projects. The Ellicott City Colored School Restored, which you can see behind me, um, was a project that originated with a woman named Beulah Meacham Buckner. Beulah, or Meach as we called her, came across this building which at the time was um, about to, f to fall over. It was in such bad shape. It turned out that it was the old Ellicott City College School. At the time, while I was saying to myself, what am I going to research? This school was very much on my mind. So I joined in their efforts for fundraising. We did a uh, golf tournament, we did a crab feast, we did all sorts of sales of this and that, raising the money to um, get the county interested in helping us to restore the bill. It was definitely not an easy thing to do. We had all kinds of opposition, um, but there was a large segment of the black population that felt that this history was worth preserving. I don't think it's ever too late to go back to school. I think that being in school, being a part of uh, that whole world of, of study, um, it's... Uh, it's very rewarding. And now I just can't get it out of my system. I'm looking around for other things to research and study. The basic premise behind my research is to try to identify a new class of HIV-1 inhibitors. Currently on the market, there's four different types of HIV-1 inhibitors. But the problem with these is that HIV will mutate frequently, rendering the drugs ineffective, as well as there's many toxic side effects to what's currently on the market. Many undergraduates that I know, uh, including myself, um, are able to have their own project and you know, contribute significantly to a research project. The information was brought to me by um, the Meyerhoff program. They basically let us know about all the different research opportunities here on campus and how accessible it was for undergraduates to get involved. From there, I was able just to browse the UMBC website and just email different professors that I thought had interesting research. I started in the summer after my freshman year, and I've been continuously researching ever since. The problems that you face aren't trivial. Many times they're, they're, they can be um, expensive problems, and they can be extremely frustrating problems, especially when you're trying to balance a, a full-time course load. But I think that the experience that I'm gaining that I'm gaining now as an undergraduate is going to help me in my future science career because I already know. Uh, it's one thing to know that um, science doesn't always go as you plan. It's another thing to actually experience it and work through it and continue to go on. of this piece in my mind, I guess, was uh, at 
I forget exactly what it was. I think it was like an artist scholar function or something, and we were sitting around waiting for um, the guest speaker to start speaking, and I looked out a window, and it just sort of, I could sort of see the reflection of everything that was going on in the window. Uh, and I could see all the people walking around and getting a little food and chatting with each other and having like conversations and just normal stuff that happens in that kind of situation. And I don't know, something about it sort of made me think that I wanted to sort of depersonalize that and sort of like put an audience on the other side of that window. I had these big set pieces at the front of the stage, the fourth wall, because part of my original idea was, you know, having the audience put in this like awkward position of looking in on this person's life, which is actually why it's called two-ray mirror, which is supposed to be like two-way mirror. Research is very important to the school, and I and I like that aspect of our education because I think that that keeps it fresh, keeps it new. I don't know that other universities necessarily do that. You can have as much dance technique as you want, but if you don't know how to make anything of it, you're just, you're gonna go be in somebody else's company, you're never going to be able to have your own company. My project was called Yantra, and it was built off of uh, some reading I had done for comparative religion classes. Um, a yantra is basically a two-dimensional um, geometric meditational image in the Hindu philosophy. And what the piece was designed to do was use video projection, sound, and a statue of sort of a Hindu guru, Murti, to give the participant the experience of what it's like to meditate on the Sri Yantra. And my project, I started working on my senior year um, for a URA grant. It was called Book of the Dead. It was a documentary uh, about vacant housing in downtown Baltimore. When I came up with the idea of the project, I was taking a religious studies class studying the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And a concept in Buddhist philosophy talks about what is called bardo, or basically kind of a limbo you go through after your death but before you reincarnate. And I thought that was a really interesting metaphor to apply to uh, vacant housing is a space. It's a, a home that has died but hasn't been reborn. And actually, since we've graduated, um, we've actually started our own media production company. Uh, we're called Vastu Media and we operate out of Federal Hill in Baltimore. And Vastu in Sanskrit, uh, depending on what dictionary you look at, either means space or matter. And really the idea is that in a sense every medium has its own sort of space or a language to it. We sort of take that philosophy and we can apply it to a variety of different media. Doing independent research in college, uh, there's a sort of self-sufficiency you develop. Well, you're like, well, I, I've never done this before, but, you know, let's give it a shot and see what happens. Uh, you know, and that, that's helped us so much in taking the, the many leaps of faith required to uh, start your own company and go off on your own. Yeah, it's a point about university students. Uh, we, we know we have the humanities scholars and artist scholars and public affairs and other scholars programs, but, but the average student at UMBC is a serious student who is very interested in his or her work and future. And our challenge is to give as many of those students as possible rich research experiences and experiences of hands-on activities, whether it's working with children, working on the hill, working in a theater, working in a cultural institution, working in a lab. One can have those scholarly activities that help to build confidence, strengthen skills, and quite frankly, leave students better prepared for the next level after they leave here. 9.15 in the morning, I'll be presenting in the library <laughs> that day. So, so what, is, what does that involve? Um, it's 15 minutes long. Um, basically, I'm going to have to it's condense my paper into about 15 minutes. I'll probably have also a PowerPoint presentation. She's, she's a wonderful person. She's trying to get papers in here. I'm going to, to pursue an MD and PhD degree. Uh, I'm actually in the application well, process. When I started the piece, I didn't know how to weld, and I needed to create an 8-foot steel cube in a year. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I worked with the technical director in the theater and a lot of the uh, theater shop people, and they let me use the space to create the piece. Uh, the whole effort. And in the process, got also 
extremely interested in the whole idea of black education and the effects of segregation. I felt like, I don't know, I, I had a, for my piece I had a lot of good dancers, a lot of like, they all worked really well together and I, I, was, I was really happy with it when it, when it all turned out in the end. But it,